In this video, I'm going to be walking you through how to build a high-powered DC switch based on a 2N 3055 power transistor. This is an NPN type device. It's cheap, inexpensive, and easy to get. Before we head into the design, I decided to pull up the spec sheet so we need to note certain issues before we even begin. Before you begin any project, please look at the spec sheets and know exactly what you're dealing with. For this project, I need to know the following. Number one, emitter collector voltage. This is the maximum voltage that I can switch on and off in the circuit. Preferably I want to use matching parts to allow me to take advantage of as high a voltage as I can get. If this is rated for 60 volts but the associated parts are rated for 10 then I can't use above 10 volts on the circuit. Sort of common sense. The next issue we have to look at is collector current. Collector current continuous is 15 amps DC. I would not run this at 15 amps. That's just a bit much. Uh, run, it can easily be run at 10. Make sure it is well heat synced. All right, the next factor we need to look at with a current of 15 amps in the collector circuit, we need to look at the base current. This is a uh, maximum of 7 amps. So we know our collector current, we know our maximum base current, and we know our collector emitter voltage. The next issue is DC gain, also known as HFE. The spec sheet says this device is rated from 20 to 70. When you're doing switching circuits, assume the lowest HFE. If it's higher, so much the better. But if you decide to use, design the circuit at 70 and it's sitting here around 30, your circuit probably won't work properly. So these are what we need to know. 60 volt collector voltage, 10 to 15 amps collector current, and a maximum base current of 7 amps DC. Let's review a very basic NPN transistor switching circuit. Here I'll be using the 2N3055 and the collector circuit will be connected to a motor which will be connected to 24 volts. In this circuit the current is going to be limited by the motor. Meaning as long as I have uh, the 2N3055 switched on, the motor will run, and I can put extra drive on the base, assuming I don't exceed 7 amps and blow the base emitter circuit, won't produce any more current. So your collector current is limited by a motor, which I'm going to designate has 10 amps, and I'm going to uh, use the HFE of 20. All right. What are we going to have uh, for IB? IB is your base current. When I close this switch, I will have a current flow through RB into the 2N3055. This will produce a base emitter voltage of 0.5 to 0.7 volts. Not that important. You can choose something in between like 0.6. Let's do a little math. 10 amp IC. To get IB, I'm going to have to divide IC, my collector current, by HFE. So I have 10 amps divided by 20, that's 500 milliamps. So I'm going to assume an IB or base current of 500 milliamps. All right, I can take the 24 volts and subtract 0.7 volts. Eh, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. So we have 23. 3 divided by 500 milliamps gives me a resistance for RB of 46.6 ohms. 47 ohms is a standard value. 
these are not super critical. I mean, you can be off 10 or 20 or 30 milliamps in this, and it st should still work. But remember, bipolar transistors are current operated. They are not operated by voltage. They are operated by current. Again, IC, the collector current, is IB times HFE. The voltage base emitter will produce a drop of 0.5 to 0.7 volts. And the rest of this down here we got off the spec sheet. Since the 2N3055 is rated for 60 volts, 24 volts is no problem. In this slide, I've removed the mechanical switch and I've went ahead and connected a TIP120 NPN Darlington transistor. This enables me to connect it directly to a microcontroller to switch the circuit on. So when you have a high, Q2 is switched on, the collector emitter current from Q2 becomes the base emitter current of Q1, the 2N3055. Because we need it 500 milliamps, um, the 5 amp rating of the TIP120 is fine. It also has a collector emitter voltage of 60 volts, so it matches well with the 2N3055. Both have collector emitter voltages of 60 volts. Note up here in the Q2 collector circuit, I could have connected it on up here, but this seems to work just as well because the current for the motor might divide between the two transistors, but it's still fully switched on and the motor will run. All right, moving on. Now I have replaced, I have added in a optocoupler between the um, to cut on Q2, which is then cuts on Q1. This has several advantages is I can isolate the motor circuit completely from the microcontroller. High end switches on the, tra the uh, internal transistor and the optocoupler. Uh, the collector current from that becomes the base emitter current of Q2, which switches on again and drops 500 milliamps through Q1. The reason you have to use these driver transistors, either Q2 directly or through an optocoupler, is something like an Arduino or a microcontroller port cannot supply 500 milliamps for Q1. And this also provides great voltage and noise isolation from your control circuits. The next question becomes, what optocoupler do I want to use? Most optocouplers that I've used in the past, like the 4N25, most are rated for collector currents, collector emitter currents of no more than 30 volts. Yet Q2 and Q1, as we saw earlier, are rated for 60 volts. So if I went with a 4N25, the circuit is only good for about 30 volts. That'll work for 24, but it seems to make it a lot less flexible. The PC817, I think is made by Toshiba, has a collector emitter voltage of 80 volts. So this will extend the device's range right up. The entire circuit's range will now be up to 70 volts. I mean 60 volts based on Q2 and Q1. Hey, that's great. Now I can, this is a more usable circuit. I can use it to switch on, say, a 48 volt motor instead of a 28 volt motor. Great. Here illustrates one use of this circuit and how you can hook it up. This is just a generic H bridge, which I have used in other circuits. That's right, I can replace the entire H bridge uh, motor that you saw before with an H bridge motor assembly. And I, you can put this in the ground side and it will work. 
and it's good up to, of course, this circuit down here will be good up to 60 volts. And, uh, and it depends on how your H bridge is rated for. So the H bridge can use a voltage up to 20, 40, uh, 50, 60 volts. Most likely you'll find something at 48 volts. This is the preferred way I believe you should connect this circuit to control an H bridge. Put it in the VCC power side of the H bridge circuit. As I discussed in my other H bridge circuits that use this particular setup, when you're switching direction with the H with your Arduino on your H bridge, however it's configured, it's a good idea to turn the power off and gives you a dead time between power, switch your direction, then switch it back on. This circuit as it stands with the PC817, the 2N3055, and the TIP120 are good up to 60 volts. And here's a basic diagram again of a generic H-bridge and some kind of power switching circuit. And note that this circuit up here can be pulse width modulated. That's right. It's an easy, safe way to pulse width modulate your motor voltage in order to control your motor speed, while the H-bridge itself only worries about direction. And here's a block diagram of some kind of, of solid state switch or solid state relay. In a way, that's what this is. It, it forms a solid state relay. That's a block. And there's all kinds of variations of this. And here is your H bridge again. And that completes the review of this transistor circuit. I hope you learned some more transistor theory here. Make sure you visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com where I will have these schematics that you can download. Thanks for listening.